Hey Ron, good to see you. Thank you so much for your help. I don't know how it's going to work. I, I know it all rocky in there. The grass isn't going to bother me near as much as the rocks. Yeah. It won't let me go down. Okay. All right, if I be inside and if we can say hello after you're done, because Wendy literally just got breakfast on the table. <laughs> she, she's a busy girl. <laughs> She's like, no, it's hot. You have to eat now. <laughs> you, you eat now. You, there's nothing you can do to help me out here. Okay, well, thank you so much. You bet. Good to see you. Bye. Yeah, thank you. I'm glad to have Ron's help. We don't have a tractor yet. He's helping us rototill the garden space. Obviously the grass is going to be an issue for the garden, so we're going to tarp the whole thing and just burn holes where we want to put our plant starts. Hopefully that'll take care of any of that weed pressure and the uh, grass that wants to grow back. I spent pretty much all day yesterday picking up rocks out of this tilled area and piling them along the fence. I spent a little bit of time this morning doing that too. Still not done, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and get some compost. We wanted to get the compost before the weekend so it's not quite so busy. I still have a little bit of work to do with these rocks. The idea behind putting the rocks over here along the fence is number one just to get them out of the garden area because they're, they're not doing us any good over there and once we have the good compost out here we're not going to want a good hard rain to just wash it all down the into the pasture out there so piling up the rocks will hopefully when they're high enough prevent that good fertility from just washing straight straight on down the road, or straight on down the hill. What do you think, Eros? Like it's all sticky and stuff. <laughs> It's been several days since I've had a chance to work on the garden. So far, we've just got compost put on around the perimeter where it's easy for our truck to drive around and shovel it out of the back. I've just been really busy working on the new goat stall, so I haven't had a chance to continue on the garden. Last night, we had a major thunderstorm, which was interesting. The first time I've been in a Midwest storm, it was just raining buckets and there was like 80 mile per hour gusts of wind. It was really something. I was curious what kind of effect that would have on our freshly laid compost. For the most part, it's still where we put it, but you can definitely see that it has eroded and run down the hill a bit. So. The soil does want to just flow right on down. Down here where I put the rocks, 
you can see how it's accumulating. But it doesn't seem to be going on the other side of the fence. So that's good. I think our system of erosion control has a chance of working. This is the lowest corner over here. And you can see where the rocks end, the soil did actually flow out and around. So that kind of tells me that the rocks do make a difference. I'll feel better once we have all the compost down and lay our landscape fabric over the top of it so that rain won't just eventually wash it all down and up and over those rocks. It's been a little while since I've been able to work on this garden. I was sidetracked with a goat stall project and putting in some um, putting in a, a garden bed for the potatoes. But now I'm back to getting compost for the garden. All I've been able to do thus far is just the little bit of perimeter right around the outside. And wouldn't you know it, the place we've been buying that compost ran out for the season. So they're not gonna have any more available for a couple months. But it turned out to be a good thing we found a local farmer, well, about an hour away, and uh, he's got about 200 cows. And lots of cow manure for us. Better prices than I was paying for that other compost. All of this manure, of course, just comes from his cows, and they're just eating his grass. He doesn't spray anything. He's got an organic operation. So really, it's ideal for us. Side is I'm importing a few extra rocks this way. This was load number one. And these piles here were load number two. And this is load number three of the cow manure. It's crazy how much time it takes to do this. I just think I should be able to get way more done in a day than I actually can get done. a good time to stop and give you a closer look at the different types of organic matter we're adding to our garden. This first stuff we added is dark and it's finely chopped but there's an awful lot of woody material in there. I'd almost call it more of a mulch than a compost. This is goat manure, spent hay, and dust from the goat stalls in our goat barn. We mucked that out before I was doing that project. This is really good stuff for the garden. And this chunky material here is super rich in organic matter. Again, really good for the garden. There's some stuff in here that hasn't broken down fully yet, but that'll happen over time. I'm feeling pretty good about how the garden's coming along.
Sorry, I didn't see the tripod get knocked over. It's a really windy day out here. This is the landscape fabric that we're using. Before we keep going with this landscape fabric, I need to break up some of these bigger chunks so that it'll lay flatter underneath that fabric. The fabric itself is pretty simple. We've got them overlapped, about that much, and stapled down right along all the seams. I've got a few implements of destruction to help me break up these clumps. It's going to be quite a process. I don't think you need to watch me do this. And really, how much more of that fabric laying do you really need to watch either? We'll keep this video moving along. Coats are out again. Wendy definitely does not want them walking on her new black plastic. So we're going to try and get them back underneath the fence here. But that brings up a good point. We need to protect the garden from our goats and from deer. The plan is to put an electric fence all the way around it. Wendy has the rest of the landscape fabric down and she stretched the electric fence around it. She used a blowtorch to melt the cut ends so the frayed edges don't unravel and she's using that torch to burn holes for where we're going to put the plants. She hasn't done all the holes yet. No sense in... Oh, let me do this. Let me show you what we've got here. Here's the place. We've got a gate. Just like that. So still a lot of stuff to plant out here, but she has a few things going that she started in our sunroom. And over on this side, she started some things from seed right in the ground through the holes in that plastic. I'd like to point out for the record that the first thing we've harvested from our garden were all those rocks for that retaining wall. The border of the garden, we're thinking about planting a whole bunch of flowers and letting some grasses grow in there too, so it'll be more of like a, like a prairie sort of transition from yard to garden. And we're hoping that doing it that way, we won't have quite as much weeding to do. Thanks for watching. Remember, your dreams are closer than the moon. Thanks for taking this trip around the moon with us.